Okay, so welcome back, and we're up to the second last module. So we're up to the point where things are starting to get interesting. We're going to look at lists. Now, lists are um, a collection of a um, bit of data stored together. So author one, author two, and author three. And then we go print, print, print. But that doesn't scale well. Three is okay. Well, not even three. I would put three in a list. But if you had a thousand, if I got a hundred, I would have had a thousand, ten thousand. So it would get repetitive, and you'd have to sit there and go author 599 equals. So we're going to use a list, which is a Python data structure. So data structures store and organize data, so it can be addressed, accessed, and modified efficiently. Lists are the simplest form, so we're going to learn about them. Um, so to create a list, you use the square brackets, and you separate your data with a comma. So these are a list of strings. So we can print author 0, 1, 2, 3. So we've kind of seen that when we use characters in strings, but now we're using strings in a list. Authors, so equals that. For author, in authors, print author. So we're using a for loop, and that'll work really efficiently. Let's have a look. Bang. So list stores a um, list of values, data, and they're written comma separated values within square brackets. It can be any type of data. So that's integer, so odd integers, colors, which are strings, and it can be empty. And it holds a sequence of elements, like a string is a sequence of characters. We can use the length, len, gives us the, the length of a list. Same as for string, because I would suspect under the hood, they are stored fairly similarly. So length of colors is four, one, two, three, four. So, but like everything else, that's zero, one, two, three. So we start at zero. <laughs> um, once we have a list, we can use the in. So is mango in words? Yes, it is, which means that we can use it in an if condition. If mango in words, print because it returns truly. So the word mango is a list. It only checks if the whole word is in the list. It won't match part of the string list. So, <coughs> so is line equals that, which is a string. So it looks for kiwi in the string, which is kiwi. Print kiwi in words. And it's not because it's looking for the whole, not kiwi fruit. <coughs> So that's something to be really careful about. Okay, so we've got a zookeeper. Again, I'm tired of asking, people asking which animals are at the zoo. Um, we're going to write a program to answer the question for you. Which animal would you like to see? The elephant, we have them in the zoo. To answer the question, you need to know which animal is the zoo. We've given you a list of all the animals. Here it is again. So we've got quite a few, so I'm going to just copy that. So I put it in there, so zoo animals. And I'm going to call this list of, just for clarity, list of zoo animals. Okay, so we've got that. And then we're asking, which animal would you like to see? Now, we know how to do this. So we can say animal equals, and it's just a straight input. To C, question mark, space, in the string. And we can just say, if animal in list of zoo. What are we going to do? Print. We have them in the zoo, exclamation mark. And if it's not, we're going to say else, print, sorry, there are none of those in the zoo. So that probably will run. So what are we going to see? Which one would you like to see? Ellie, print, we have them. And have we got a panda? Okay, so we red. And uh, we have them, so that looks okay. Oh no! What have we done? Sorry, there are no. Again, you all saw that typo, and you're going, come on, fix that typo. And I'm just like going, ignoring you. It's a video, I can't hear you. What's this one now? Sorry, there are none. And I just spoke about fixing that up, and you guys are going, what are you, an idiot? Like, it's early in the morning, and I'm making some typos, so get over it, I'll fix them and you'll see. So there you go. All testing passed. So that was pretty cool. So we can actually sort. So pets.sort. So let's have a look at that. And we can reverse them. So these actually affect the lists. So they actually change the order of the lists. Sort will put it in alphabetical order and reverse will put it in reverse order. Um, it modifies the original list. It sorts in place rather than returning a new list. So um, it doesn't actually return anything because it changes pets. It doesn't actually 
change this list here. So um, yeah, so don't do this. Pets not sort, pets not reverse, does it? Um, it has a value of none, which is um, kind of weird. Might well, just means it has reinitialized and stuff like that. So don't go pet something equals pets not sort. Pets is sorted once you use pet dot sort. Okay, so let's construct a list from user input. So enter your subjects, and then we're going to split it, and it automatically splits on a um, space. So enter your subjects: math, English, and cooking. There you go. It creates a list. So it's just printing the subjects out, and it prints it out, comma separated as strings. And we can go into your subjects, split it, and then we can print it line by line. So into your subjects: math, English, cooking, and then we've all we've done is we've um, looped over our subjects. I would get in the habit of um, list of subjects. So if you're using a list, create a list of. Call it a list so it's really clear what you're actually doing. Okay, so salad. So salad chef. Lucky I was doing some cooking classes. Write a program which reminds you to wash and cut each vegetable to put in the salad. The program should ask the user to enter the list of vegetables and separate by space. It should then output instructions to wash and cut each vegetable in the order they were entered. Finally, it should output put everything to a large bowl and toss. So that's what it should. Now, so how do we start? We're going to have veg equals so our list of vegetables, and we're just going to go input, and we know how to do this, which veg equals space in that, and list of veg equals, and we're just going to split that. So we've got a list of vegetables, and for what are we going to call this? For thing in list of Veg. So for each thing we've got, we're going to print wash the thing, print cut the thing, and then once we've finished that, we're going to print put everything into a large bowl and toss. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to grab this input just to test it. So I'm just cutting and pasting, and that looks not too bad. So there we go. Ah, what didn't I do? Which vegetables? Put everything to my top and toss. Yeah. So I've got that. Wash the carrots. Ah. Plus, full stop. That is quite a bit sneaky. So let's have a look. I'll fix it up. So wash the lettuce, cut lettuce, wash the carrots, cut, put everything to a large bowl and toss. And I haven't got the full stop there. So attention to detail. As I said earlier, guys, it's a bit early in the morning and I'm making a few mistakes, but I'm getting that. What? And again. So what am I missing this time? Put everything to a large bowl and toss. Have I got that? Everything into a large bowl and toss. Um, it was meant to output. Put everything into a large bowl and toss. And you're all laughing at me because you can see into a large bowl. Put everything. Yeah, typo. So you guys have been laughing at me going, come on, we're watching this video. We want quality. We don't want this. So it all says, like, what are we paying you for? You're being pathetic. So I'll fix it up. Anyway, there you go. You just saw how you debug for free. So, um, okay. So now we're up to um, an item list can be used using an index, just like character string. So we can do all that sort of stuff. So minus one, one, and you'll go out and you'll get an index error. So just be careful using indexes. And remember, it starts at zero and goes up to um, that value. So, um, so strings are immutable. Lists are not. You can modify a list by using the indexes. So. Um, all right, it's time to announce the winner of the competition. The numbered contestants are waiting. Write a program to select the right name to announce given an ordered list of contestant names and the winning contestant's number. So contestant, contestant name, Fred, yourself, Zioni, Sarah. So who's going to win? The contestant numbers start at one, but Python starts at zero, so we've got to remember that. So how would we start that? Well, names equals input contestant names, space, finish that off names list or we'll keep it list of names equals names dot split. So we've got a list of names. Winner equals and it's an integer is input 
and we're going to say winning contest event number double and two brackets there. We know how to, in, to inputs. So and then we're just going to go print, and the winner is. We're just going to go list of names. Ooh, remember, we've got to go from zero, so we've got to go winner minus one. And plus an exclamation mark, close that. And you're all sat there going, you've misspelled winner, I'll put winner, enter winner. So that should work. Let's have a look. Contestant names, let's use these ones. And number two. Yay, that seems to work. Now, this doesn't check that it works, but to, fix, to program this properly, you would check that you entered a proper number and you also entered it less than the length because otherwise it would just crash. We don't want that. So we need to, um, one of the things that we're looking, we'll look at later on is defensive programming. So it's how do we stop it crashing? How do we make it a bit more useful? Okay, so let's go adding to the end of the list. So we can actually append. Append means put something at the end of the list. So we can just go dog, mouse, fish, print pets, and then we're going to append cat. And we can keep going. Um, let's have a look at this one. Hermit crab and a cat at the end. And it appends a string, so hermit crab is a item. It's not two separate items. Just something to be careful. Okay, so books equals input which book you're returning. While books, so remember, while book means while this isn't empty, we're going to append the book, which book you're returning, and we're just going to keep going, then we're going to sort it. Um, so that's pretty cool. Proving our program. So we're going to print it on each line. So that's um, pretty much how like what we're going to do. And what we're going to do, and the winner is. Uh, so we've got another competition, and to maximise suspense, we're going to read out the results at the top things in reverse order. No one will know who the winner is right until the end. The place of honourable mention and name of each thing will be entered in order, one per line, starting at first place. So that's um, that's the order, and then we reverse it. Okay, so how we do this? So results, we know how to create one result. And it's an empty list, it's an empty list. And we're going to go results. Result, so this is our individual result equals input, enter result. Okay, so we've got that. And while, while, while result, we're going to results dot append result. So while we have something, so result equals something, we're going to put something, we're going to put that something onto the end. And we're going to go result result equals input and I might just save a little bit of typing because it's exactly the same. So we've got that and then we want to reverse the list. So results dot reverse. So that changes results, so it sorts it in reverse order. And then we're going to print and we've got the print. And the winners are dot dot dot. And then for winner in results, for each winner we're going to print winner and then we've got an exclamation mark at the end. And I will run that into results. So first place is enter results. So Dean, you can second, sorry. Third, Reagan. Honourable mention. Sorry, when I said reverse sorts it in reverse, it doesn't actually sort it in reverse. So, and nothing. And the winner is honourable mention. So we don't actually want to sort it in reverse. We just want to reverse the list. So that should work. So that is that. And guess what? We're up to the last one, and we could sprint and do it, but. I'm going to pause it here and we're going to go through that. So we are up to list of characters, then we're going to do list of numbers, number planes and coordinates, so a bit more drawing, and then congratulations. So that's pretty cool. So I'll see you back for number 10.